So hello, today we're just going to talk about some basic problems uh, for standardized tests and for math problems used for aptitude tests and a lot of teachers are going to be taking tests lately so we're going to go over a review where some recent college graduates to give you some insight on to what may be on a lot of teacher based tests. So this uh, problem says evaluate the discriminant for the following equation and the equation is 2x squared uh, plus 20x plus 50 and this is standard like quadratic form that says it equals 0. So b squared minus 4ac equals a discriminant and here are some guidelines in case someone asks you uh, it, is there is there going to be a real solution? Um, how many roots does it have? Like the question might get staged that way. It'll say real roots. And so when you first look at this, you'll say, well, all the numbers up here are positive. And that's a common mistake made that because all of these are positive, that that means that uh, it means that since all of these are positive, that means that all of this is going to be um, it's going to be a it's going to have two real roots. But here's the situation: in order to really do it correctly, you have to do b squared minus 4ac. So anyway, when we put b a c b squared minus 4ac, we see that our a term is 2, our b term is 20, and our c term is 50. So we plug that in. We have 4 with a here, and we have c here. And I use the brackets to, of course, represent multiplication. And so you have 20 times 20 is 400. That is 8, because you went ahead and did 4 times 2 is 8. And then this is 50. And here's what goes on. This now becomes 400 minus 400 and that becomes zero really 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 so if that's zero then guess what there's only one real solution so be careful about how you're doing this and remember this c value is larger than this a value and that might change how things are going to work in this equation. Okay, so you have a graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c shown on the right, and it shows that it's uh, upward, so you can go ahead and check here. This is positive, and it has to be positive because it's going up, which means that your values are increasing. But be careful now, here's the other part that really complicates what goes on here. These values are negative. So here it says x equals negative 2, your x-intercept, and um, this is a negative value, so you have this here, there's no real solution, even though the graph is positive. Uh, what are we doing here? You would do b squared minus 4ac, but because your x-intercept is negative, you go ahead and you apply those rules that we use on the other page, which says if it's if uh, your discriminant is greater or a term is greater, um, then you have two roots and greater than zero, two roots less than zero. Okay, you have two roots, and if a is equal to zero, you have one root, and if a is less than, meaning that it's negative zero, you have none. And they'll say, they'll, they'll also say no solutions. So we have that there. Okay, now we're going to get into this situation. There's several things you have to do. Your parabola is going downward. So this is already here, the parabola opens down here, and since it opens downward, a is less than zero. Okay, 
The x-intercept of the graph automatically then corresponds. That's an assumption they make to help you solve that. The vertex of a parabola is on the x-axis, but where is it on the x-axis? At the vertex 4 and 0. So why did I do the discriminant here? Because if you wanted to apply any of these values here, and like let's say y was negative 2, and you go a, which you not know in your coefficient, but over here your x is 1, 1 squared, and then you have plus b1, you'd have to do some substituting here, and you could do your constant as 0. Okay, you're going to have to substitute this because everything over here is 1. This is 1 squared. In order to get to this discriminant, you have to do your terms of, you have a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 0. Four times zero, zero, one minus zero, and this is one minus zero, which is equal to one. Okay, the x-intercept four is positive. Your y value was given to you as zero, so you've got to make sure everything over here is zero. This y value is what makes it real. Four times zero is zero minus 1, so 1 minus 0 equals 1, if that's the case. So in this instance, y is going to equal 1. You have a positive 4. The x-intercept is 4. So you have two possible real roots. A rocket is launched from top of a 30-foot cliff that has an initial velocity of 160 feet per second. The height, which is represented as h of the rocket up to t seconds, is given an equation. h equals negative 16t plus 160t plus 30. Uh, how long will it be before the rocket? How long will it be? 10 feet from the ground. Okay, t seconds. You have to substitute. This is here. You then have to take this h and put a 10 here because you are actually now solving for how long before it's 10 feet. It changed on you. So it's very important that you pay attention to what is going on here. Okay, so this 10 that you see here is now going to replace your zero for your quadratic, but we're not done yet. Okay. You have your steps here. You convert your h. Uh-oh, this is a small t, but it should be really up top. This is the 2 here. This is the 2 here. Sorry, guys, that it's at the bottom, but it's the 2 here. And this is 0, and it's 10. So you go 10 minus 10 is 0 here, but you have to take this 10 and subtract it. Its additive inverse has to go. That then brings the equation to 20. 16t, 20, was it? Come on, let's go. Solve using a quadratic equation to solve the new equation. And this is your quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus uh, radical b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 160 squared minus 4 times 16 times 20. This is negative 32. That's at the bottom. And then you solve this 4 times 6, 64 times 20. And you do math, and then I went here, over here, 14 times 6. I just did the steps here. This is 64 times 20. 64 times 20 gives you 1,280. Then you subtract that from what you had. 160 times 160 gives you 25,600. Remember, you have to keep this here and do a plus or minus of both, val both values. So you have this here. You have under square root 24,320, negative 60, plus or minus. And remember, 
that these, if you can, you can try to cross them. Usually you try to cross across all three. And when we go back over, it has to be the positive number for your answer. So let's get that answer because you're waiting to see when the rocket goes up and then drops. That's what it's got to do. It's got to do a fission. So negative 17, 61 is one answer because that's what happened when we sub when we uh, subtracted 60 from positive 155 over 94, then divided by 13, 30, negative 32. Now when we do the positive number to 60 plus 155.94 over negative 32, we still end up with this negative number. What happens is um, when you do negative 60 minus minus 154, that stays negative, that stays negative, and that's how you get your positive value of 19.16. So your positive value of 19.16 is your answer, and they might ask you to round it and it would be 19, and if they ask you, you know, round it to the nearest tenth, you would 19.1. Okay, so for the last problem here, this uh, equation in the textbook asks you to solve um, the function cumulative number of deaths from disease X years after 1984. Estimate the year that there were 89,000 deaths. Well, guess what? This comes off as if they're trying to set it off as if it's a derivative and you're going to take something out and solve it when all you're doing is straight quadratic. Your A term is 3,713. B term is 5,417. C term is 5,001. So here's what you're going to do. And you're going to solve it all out. It is ugly, ridiculous. Hopefully, when you take the teacher test, nothing is this awful, but the students, you have to know how to do that because students actually have this in an algebra book. So if you started in 1984, I'm going to go ahead and change this ink here, started at 1984 and you add it up, okay, because you had your positive value of 408. Um, you don't, once again, you don't use a negative value. That's not always the case, but here it is. Why don't you use a negative value? Because they want you to go forward progression and look at the number of times that something is, um, look at the number of times the disease, if it started here in a certain year in 84, they want to know, estimate the year when there were 89,000 deaths. Okay? And you start here, and you're growing up exponentially, so if you go backwards with this formula, your death started out at whatever x would have been, so you'd have to go back and solve for when x would be 0, because 84 would be 0, so now you're going here because you have 4.08. That's approximately 4 years. So you add here. And so your answer is 1988. These problems intimidate a lot of people. A lot of people say, how do I do this? this and that. When they tell you to solve for the quadratic, that's the first thing. First thing that you do, and here's everything I said, discard negative 5.54 uses and count up. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.